But um, yeah, as far as as far as like, you know, transitioning soil. No, this is ideal. And I think that the biggest problem we have, and I stated it earlier, was that the municipalities and the powers that be don't give a shit. They don't they don't care about the soil. They only care about lining their pockets with with the money that they're getting paid to take the food waste. And until there's teeth in the laws that fine them for this irresponsibility, they're not going to be a target client because they don't care. So we've got to find we've got to find organic farmers. Uh, communities, you know, I, I was talking to the Irvine company about thinking about putting one of these in because they have a tremendous amount of retail, retail stores where they could actually collect the waste, charge their retail clients, their, 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 their customers to haul off that waste, process it and use that process to treat their land. I mean, Irvine company owns fucking Irvine, California. Yeah. And if anyone has the, you know, nads to search it, Please look at look at look at their mission statement. Irvine, since since the guys put together the money, I think it's seventy one or maybe sometime in the seventies, planted over a million trees in Irvine to start to build a what they want to call as a futuristic, more sustainable, getting humans back in contact with their environment. So they're the perfect company, and that's the kind of target audience or or client that that. We're going to start shifting toward looking at um, as well as some of these angel investors. And, and there was a food group they're working on up uh, north and Fowler. You know, those kinds of companies are going to be the ones that, that really mm-hmm. adopt this methodology. And, yeah. the only, and the other ones will be small scale landscapers. They can go house to house and take your take your food and yard waste, process it and then reapply it to your land. In my mind, that would be an amazing huge impact because you know how many lawns and landscapes are you know i don't know what percentage of the earth is covered by those but it's significant so you know again those are more more potential beneficial clients that can afford to buy you know small scale bench top uh, uh, some water tanks and a, and a pump sprayer and have a huge impact on the environment out of the gate so anyway that's that's the goal. But if anyone in the audience was interested in getting some of this, Av, I don't think I can send it to you. Uh, maybe maybe I'll smuggle some. Oh, I'm not driving up. I'm flying up now. Uh, shit. Oh, well. Well, I could bring three-ounce bottles, right? <laughs> okay, there we go. And remember, you you, you dilute it. So uh, if you give it a three-ounce concentrate, that'll actually go a little ways. Yeah, it would be uh, 30 ounces of water, correct? So that, that would work. Um, Layton, one of the things that I'm going to try is I'll take a couple of drums back to Nebraska. I grew up in the Great Plains, uh, and I want to see what it does on wheat and milo. So we can take a small section of a, a field uh, and take maybe five acres and treat it and see what happens with it in comparison to the rest. They're doing uh, no-till farming, but it's chemical no-till. So they're getting the fertilizer. They're using the glyphosate to control the weeds. Um, I want to see if we can break that cycle. Uh, and my intention is to have the young man that's that's farming it for us uh, turn our farm into a, a section where he's going to be doing more of the organic farming. I don't know that he's going to like that. <laughs> that if I can prove to him he can make more money and work less, uh, mm-hmm. then I think maybe he'll uh, listen a little more. 